65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of the TPT Podcast. Today, we have the Dolphins and the Chiefs matchup, but we have returning co-host, Zach. Zach, how you doing, man? Doing great. How about you, man? Doing well, man. Excited for this uh, Dolphins game. Not so excited about the wake-up. I don't know about you. I know you're on Central Time, right? So it's going to be a little earlier for you than it is me. Yeah, I don't mind. I'll be volunteering in the morning, so I'll already be up. Okay, uh, so the, you'll, yeah. be, you'll be right ready. You'll have your uh, your frosted slates on with Chiefs football. Yep. Yes, sir. And uh, and also, we got another guest joining us, uh, a dear friend of mine. Uh, you guys know him from TikTok as Grizzy. He makes awesome sports content and wrestling content. My man, Nicholas New. Nick, what is happening, my man? What's going on, Jaden? I am... I love to be here, man. This is a great podcast. Talk about some Chiefs football, baby. And it's always great when we're talking about football. Yes, sir. Get to talk a little Chiefs. We know you're a big Vikings fan, just like Dustin. It seems like we keep having these Vikings fans on here. People are going to be like, Jaden, I know you were born in Minnesota. Your brother's a Vikings fan. Are they starting to infiltrate your mind? Um, as you know, you know, I was giving you guys the business when the Chiefs uh, beat the Vikings. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's a good to have another fellow Vikings fan here. But you, we know that uh, you have some big news about our betting show uh, that's going to be airing on the TPT Network. Yes, Jaden, we have a new segment called Best Bets. It's going to be me and Mr. Klug, Mr. Dustin Klug, us Vikings fans, starting a new pod, a new segment on the TPT podcast, Best Bets, where we'll be taking five bets and one lock of the week. Winner? We'll go record-wise. Whoever has the best record at the end of the year gets a free jersey from Jaden's Jerseys. And always make sure you go to Jaden's Jerseys, get your jersey. Yes, sir. Best bets. It's going to be aired here at the end of the episode. And you guys will see it exclusively on the TPT YouTube. But uh, with that being said, we got some stuff to talk about uh, that happened this Tuesday. Is the trade deadline. There were some big moves made. The Kansas City Chiefs didn't make some moves, which we're going to get into. But... There was some moves made. My man, Zach. Zach, how did you feel? What was your feeling after the trade deadline? How was What was kind of going through your head as a Chiefs fan after the trade deadline? Uh, that's what I expected as a Chiefs fan. Honestly, right. the Miko the move, uh, which uh, not super like influential on the team overall, but I felt like that was going to be it after it happened. Uh, we made the Kadarius right. Tony mo- uh, the Kadarius Tony move last year. But I just I don't come to expect uh, big splashes with Veach come the trade deadline, at least uh, since he became general manager. So I was not surprised in the in the slight least. Yeah, it was it was a little weird. I mean, you you sit there on pins and needles as I'm on Twitter or X or whatever they want to call it, and I'm sitting there and I'm kind of thinking, come on, make a move, make a move. And I, and and people were getting me all day. There, I saw fake NFL accounts posting Terry McGloin in Chiefs jerseys and. Terry McGloin got traded and this guy got traded. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I look and, and it's some random account, uh, probably some 12 year old made, but it, it, it does, you know, like you said, it's not, I'm surprised, but not surprised. I guess just more disappointed because you do, you did want to see maybe Patrick Mahomes go get a, another just weapon. So it has that insurance. I don't think it's the end of the world, but we all want to be comfortable. We don't want to sit there and be uncomfortable with question marks because there is some question marks in our receiving room, which we're going to talk about, but you never want to be left with just, just flat out question marks um, going into this game and just going into this stretch of the final nine games of the season. And, and to me, yeah, it was a little bit of a letdown, um, just not going to go get a receiver. Um but, you know, it, it, it is kind of – it does kind of make sense. You know, you, you like you just said, you gave up some picks for McCall Hardman. You gave up Kadarius Tony the year before that. That was kind of just the – you know, you got that feeling that that was kind of their move. Um, is there anybody in still in free agency would you like to go get, or do you really truly believe this is a receiving core at the end of the season? Well, receiver's tough. I feel like 
throughout the years, Veach has always done more with free agency, with veteran free agent signings than at the trade deadline. And so I expect right. that to happen again this year. But receivers is a tough position for that. Normally it's like defensive line guys, um, edge rushers like we did Suggs. Uh, last mm-hmm. year we had that – what's that big dude's name? He's huge. That's all I remember. And then with Pinnell, uh, the Sh- first – sorry? Danny Shelton? Yeah, Danny Shelton, but also I was thinking of Brandon Williams. Uh, oh, and okay. then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Mike Pinnell, that first Super Bowl run, and then I guess he's on the practice squad now. So that's what I come to expect. I expect we're going to add depth um, come, uh, like, veteran free agent signings more than just the trade deadline. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, like you said, shooting a good – I mean, they're so – um, I know Dustin on message last week. You have guys like George Landry. If it really comes desperate, there are some just some names out there if you want to just and we have seen the past where all of a sudden at the end of the season, uh they'll they'll release guys. They'll release some guys that aren't really performing at the end of their bench. Maybe even Juju Smith if they're really just like, you know what, we want to kind of get this guy, want to move him off of our roster and kind of just clear some cap space for the so the start of the next season to kind of release them a little bit earlier but there's just there's some guys out there that all of a sudden you could see maybe get uh not some big name guys but just some guys that can just help the Chiefs any way they can um now flipping over to my man uh Nick Nick were you surprised or was there anyone you thought where you were like this guy's gonna get traded to the Chiefs or are you kind of more in the same boat as us yeah, man, I'm in the same boat as you guys. Obviously, you want to see the Chiefs make a splash for a Terry McLaurin, but those things don't happen every day. Terry McLaurin, right. he, you would love to see him and Patrick Mahomes together. Terry obviously would love to play with Patrick Mahomes. You know, who doesn't want to play with the best quarterback in the league? But those are splashes you don't see every day. Also, Tyler Boyd, rumors around him, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. But uh, those are players, you know, the Chiefs fans, I, I'm sure – you guys would have loved to see on Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's sometimes people don't understand. I see a lot of people, and which is very frustrating, is Twitter can be a great place to get your thoughts out and just kind of express your feelings. But some of these Chiefs fans, Chiefs fans, remember what Aaron Rodgers said a couple of years ago, and I know Zach's one of the biggest advocate of this, is like, just relax. It, it, you have some guys that can make some plays for the Kansas City Chiefs at the receiver position, they just really have to mesh. Um, it, it's just – I feel like it's just an overreaction after some losses. I think, yeah, obviously you'd like to see a, a guy just get a pure number one. I think Brett Veach will find that guy. Right now that's not the case. When you go from a guy like Tyreek Hill, obviously you're going to have a huge drop-off. We still able, able to win a Super Bowl this last season. This week we're going up against – the Miami Dolphins, we all know that. If they can go to toe-to-toe with probably the best team in the AFC right now, the second best team in the AFC, right now I think everything will be okay. I think the receivers will eventually be fine. Um, some other moves on the trade deadline that I'm just so curious to get your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think is some of the other winners on the trade deadline? Uh, Zach, again, I'll start with you. Who are some of the, the, the big moves you liked? Because I think there's one in particular everyone is buzzing about on the trade yeah, deadline. Yeah, it's, it's Chase Young. And yeah, yeah. the fact, I mean, the team that was going to trade for him was going to be willing to re-sign him. Obviously, I believe the commanders declined his fifth-year option, which is right, crazy. Yeah. Because he had yeah. shown nothing but promise. Other than at the beginning of the year, he ended up getting injured. He started off slow. But this year, he's looking like the Chase Young that we uh, knew his rookie year. And Absolutely. the fact that he's pairing up with Bosa and Hargrave – and uh, Kinlaw and all those guys uh, on the 49ers defensive line. It's just, it's honestly unfair because I think he was very underrated in this whole trade deadline process. Like he's an, he's a near elite edge. And yeah. the fact that you're able to get him for a third round pick is just honestly insane. It's robbery. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, I, 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 can, I completely agree. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, the Chiefs, I mean, can you imagine if the Chiefs could just find would have found a way to think if they could knew they could get a third round pick? I know you want to try to keep as many picks as you can, especially when you want to be cheaper. And like you said, he was gonna to go to a team that was able to resign him. And the 49ers, they have a connection there because he's a former teammate in Bosa, they're Ohio State guy. So what does this truly mean? Does this, in your opinion, 
does this set them over the edge or is there still another team in the NFC where you're like, this is still the top dog, but the 49ers are still right there. I think it's the Niners. I mean, I know they've lost three in a row. I mean, I can't, right. I can't put, I can't put it past the Eagles respectfully, uh, but it's those two. And then I see a drop off. The Lions have performed, yeah. but the the line, I mean, like the lines just kind of have fraud written on them, despite them being yeah. solid at every area, both on offense and le- to a lesser extent on defense, but their defense is much improved. I just think the Niners, once they get uh, Debo back, and once all their offensive weapons are healthy, they have too many weapons, too good of a coach, and just too much talent on the defense. The defense is honestly underperforming to this point uh, relative to what they were doing last year. And they didn't really lose much talent. They still have the elite linebackers, the elite front, and uh, the secondary can uh, get the job done. So I, I see Eagles and right below the Niners and then a gap. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm curious to get Grizzly's thought on this real quick before we get in, you know, some of the, some of the other trades on the trade deadline other than uh, Chase Young. But Grizzly, I know you're a Vikings fan. How do you feel – about the you know you have the the 49ers you have the eagles and do you agree with zach or there's a little bit of a drop off do the detroit lions have fraud written all over them this is what i'm curious from your perspective as a vikings fan Jaden, like i've told you before man the lions remind me a lot of last year's vikings teams they just you know right. they play a team they play a team like the baltimore ravens they get blown out but uh, it kind of, you know, that Baltimore game kind of gives me a little reminder of the when the Vikings played the Cowboys last week, last year. Sorry, yeah. but um, you know, the Lions frauds. I don't know. I think they have too much of a good team to be frauds. I still think they can get it done, but they just need to get it done. They need to get it done against good teams. Yeah, and I, I agree. It's it's kind of like what you know we talked about in the past when you know Miami has to just go blow to blow with talent teams and kind of winning shootouts. Um, it doesn't go well. I, I do want to see the I, I mean, again, they beat Kansas City respectfully. They, the Lions got us. They got us week one, but there was two Hall of Famers not playing in that game. Two Hall of Famers did not play in that game. Um, then you go play the Seahawks. You lose at home. Then you go play the Ravens, and you lose, you get blown out by the Ravens. You weren't, it wasn't even remotely competitive. Um, so, yeah, I do want to see the Lions against, again, the, the Cow- they have the Cowboys coming up. They have the um, they have the Vikings coming up. So yes, I do want to see them compete for uh, some of the top tier teams. Um, I just don't know quite if the the Lions are just that team, or it's like you have. Is it going to be a repeat of the NFC Championship game? And if not, are they that third team? I even think the Cowboys could have something to say about it. Um, but yeah, I just don't know um, the Lions uh, if they're that 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 third team because the Lions did make the trade. If I'm not mistaken, then the Lions pick up a receiver. Yes, Jaden, the Lions did pick up Donovan Peoples Jones from the Cleveland Browns. I think it was for a fifth round pick. Oh, okay, yeah, and I, I think that will help them. They do need a little bit uh, help outside of, and I, I think a lot of people aren't realizing that they do need a little bit more help um, outside of um, say Brown. Um, you know, they have Josh Reynolds and they have Williams, but I do think they just need more help at the receiver position. Uh, Laporta is playing well, but I think they just need that other guy that can just go get in the ball. I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is a good pickup. But, you, you know, the Vikings are picking up some steam. Maybe they have something to say about the division um, and can compete with the, the Lions. But uh, another pickup for the Lions during the trade deadline. Um, and then there was another move for the Chicago Bears. Uh, Zach, did you do you feel like – the Chicago Bears, I know and this is what I really want to ask you guys to kind of go around the league before we get into the Chiefs ball side of things is, do you think the uh, the Bears are kind of setting up themselves in the right way for this next offseason, getting a guy like Sweat, having a lot of cap space, um, and, you know, they still have Justin Fields, or do you still think there's a lot of moves they still need to make to kind of get back in that division through the North? I don't like the move. Ryan Poles, okay, I, I was rooting for Ryan Poles with him coming from uh, right. the Chiefs organization. But yeah. I I look at timelines a lot. And where are you on the timeline? And the Bears are the as far back as you can be with them probably not having the quarterback that's going to take them all the way. So they're going to need to draft a quarterback. They're going to need to get more right. line help. They need receiver help. And so I don't understand 
getting they basically traded a 21 year old or 22 year old for a 27 year old a 27 year old who although he is a good player they're gonna have to pay big money right away if they want to keep him right with him being an expiring contract and so i don't understand messing with the timeline they're gonna have guys in all sorts of different parts of their careers instead of keeping the draft capital and building a team from the ground they're trying they're trying to take shortcuts and i, I don't see how that's gonna work yeah, I, I 100% agree. I I do like Ryan Poles. I am rooting for Ryan Poles. But I just they, it feels like they keep making moves for guys who are good, just not guys who are great. I think, you know, they traded for um, a couple of linebackers this year, and they really haven't panned out to do much. Uh, they, they keep trying to bring in talent. I just don't know if Justin Fields is going to be their guy. So I keep Justin Fields. You know, they may have two top five picks. So in with the QB talent in this draft, it would be kind of wild for the Bears not to – you know, maybe consider drafting a quarterback and seeing how many picks you can get for a guy like uh, Justin Fields. So, yeah, I'm rooting for a guy like Ryan Poles because um, his connection to Kansas City, um, which is going to bring us, of course, into what we've all wanted to talk about. Why we're on this podcast is a little bit of Chiefs football. Um, I, I'm curious, too, what is, you know, your guys' first thoughts, you know, just – just going into Germany, you have this big game. How, what does this truly mean uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs if they're able to just get this game done versus the Miami Dolphins? Zach, I'll start with you. This game is huge May I for seeding mainly because this year it's so tight. There's right. the Ravens, the Bills, the Bengals are catching fire again. The Dolphins, us, the Jaguars schedules a cakewalk. And yeah. with there only being one by now, it's this game could really end up changing everything. Although it j- it's just being one. And I want to say, especially this weekend with also the Bengals playing the Bills, this could Bills, be huge yeah. for the AFC East division. If the Dolphins were able to, if the Dolphins win this game, which hopefully not, and then the Bills lose that game, Dolphins are up how many games? I guess two. But that that's yeah, huge two. with both teams mm-hmm. being really good. And for the Chiefs, they – I don't want to even like get near a panic button if we lose this game because we've had yeah. bad stretches in the Mahomes era. We had the uh the beginning of 20 the, the beginning of 2019 the year we won the Super Bowl, lost to the Texans, lost to the Colts, a few weeks later lost to the Titans. We had 2020 yeah. 2021 where we yeah, got blown out. Uh first we lost to the Ravens, then we lost to the Chargers, then we got blown out by the Titans. So I it's it's a big game for us for seeding purposes, but as far as my confidence in the Chiefs as a team, if we're within a if we're within a field goal or we win the game, you know, I'm I'm not panicking. Yeah, and you know, before we get into our matchups, Grizzy, on the outside looking in, because you know, maybe we have our Kool-Aid goggles. Is this a make or break game for the Chiefs going into Germany? Or is this, you know, with this loss, they can still try to find a way? Or do you think that Miami after that will find a way to be so hard, so far above everybody with their schedule? Um, or do you think, again, this is a game, if they lose, the Chiefs can still find a way to be one of the better teams in the league? Jaden, I don't think Chiefs fans should be worried at all. I mean, when you got a guy like Patrick Mahomes, you're going to win games. But I definitely want to say this is a Big game for Dolphins fans. Dolphins lose this game. It'll more prove that they cannot win these big games against teams over 500. So, Jaden, I have to say this is definitely a bigger game for Dolphins fans than it is Chiefs fans. And win or lose for the Chiefs, I think the Chiefs will be just fine. Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the nail. Is This, to me, almost is a bigger game for the Miami Dolphins because – Again, you have a team where they've they haven't beat a team when they played them that was above 500 since week two of 2022. So I think this is a big deal for the Dolphins because people are going to start looking at Tua saying, "Can you beat the big guys? Can you beat the big dogs?" Yes, you beat Josh Allen before, um, but can you do it consistently? We went and we saw you go play the Eagles. You got blown out. We went and seen you go play 
the uh, Buffalo Bills. You got blown out. You can't go out here, especially in a game where you're losing, if you lose this game by the Chiefs by 10 or more points. I don't think it's a make-or-break game like these ESPN experts and all these people are saying because, like, Zach knows just as much as I do. He just brought up where you've had in the past in 2021. We were the first seed. You have all these years, or even last year. Chiefs, did they not lose to the Bengals? Yep. Did they lose to the Bills? Yep. They lost to all the big dogs, but what happened at the end of the year? Guess who was playing in the Arrowhead Invitational? Of course, the Kansas City Chiefs, because it wouldn't be called the Arrowhead Invitational, the AFC Championship, a.k.a., if the Chiefs weren't playing in it, because every single year the Chiefs are getting the first seed. And I will say this. I would always put this as, if you guys are going to go check out best bets, I'm going to put this bet on just the whole season. If the Chiefs win this game, I'm almost guaranteed a first seed for the Kansas City Chiefs. Even if they go out and they lose to a team like the Bengals or the Bills, I still think that the Chiefs can win in Germany. I still think they will have the first seed no matter what happens the rest of the season. I think the Kansas City Chiefs will have the first seed. But Grizz, or Grizzy, Nick, you know you know, you know, know, I like to call you my man Grizzy. Um, I think you nailed it on the head. This is a bigger game for the Dolphins. And, and we know what Tyree Kill has said. I got a little quote from Tyree Kill, uh, what he told people. This was uh, before the season. He went on uh, 810 Sports Radio. Shout out 810 Sports Radio. I listen to him every day. Um, he went on there and he said when he comes to Kansas City, he, this was when he thought he was going to play in Kansas City before his move to Germany. He said when he can't just come, uh, comes to Kansas City, he's going to run all over the Chiefs. Chiefs, be prepared because I'm coming for you. And then this is his recent comment. Uh, he's saying the Chiefs are going to have to come see me. You feel me? Uh, I, they can pl- they can come get it anywhere. Zach, how do you feel about our old friend? I do Tyreek not care. Hill? I do not care at all. That's Tyreek. That's Tyreek. We know Tyreek. Th- this should not be like you know news. This is how Tyreek talks. This is how he acts, and it's cool. He's he's a competitor. Uh, he's one of the most fun players in the league to watch. And I mean, I saw what he said today. He he started like gassing up two or acting like he was gonna say two was the MVP, and then he said Alec Ingold. You know, so he's he's just he's he's a clown. He's a fun guy. So it's it's whatever. Do you so? Do you think this is? A, do you do you think you know you you played sports? Do you think as an athlete when you see? You know, the kind of whispers of this guy said this, this kind of, they may, you know, what people got to understand, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, they are still great friends of Tyreek Hill. But, you know, we've all had friends where they're talking a little trash. They may play for the rival high school. You know, they're coming to town. You know, does it really add a little bit more to the fuel uh, when you're going up against a guy who's kind of just, let's be honest, talked down about the Chiefs last two years? Yeah, what, what did Michael Jordan say in that document? He was like, I took it personally. That's every right. athlete. Every elite athlete tries to take anything they can get to have just a little extra more motivation, bullet board material, all that. So that's just that's just the competitiveness in Tyreek. And then I'm sure uh, the Chiefs players are going to take his disrespect, even though they they know it's just him being a, a competitor. Yeah, uh, Grizzy, you know, you obviously you've played against the you, you've seen your team play against a guy like. Patrick Mahomes. Do you think this is uh do you think this adds a little bit more to Patrick Mahomes? We've seen what happened in the AFC Championship game versus the Bengals. That was a Chiefs team that was playing for just a little bit more because of what was being said the entire week. Do you think it's a good thing that Tyreek Kill is out here talking a little bit of trash on the Chiefs? Jaden, you know everybody watched that quarterback documentary, and you know what happened when Max Crosby talked a little smack to Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah. He gave it right back to him. And who won that game? Kansas City Chiefs, of course. Tyreek Hill is just lighting the fire underneath Patrick Mahomes. That's why I said check out best bets. I think Mahomes goes for 300 passing yards. And I, like I said, I think the Chiefs win this game. Whether it's by a field goal, one point, or 20 points, I still think the Chiefs win. Doesn't matter if this game's played in Germany, Italy, on the freaking moon. I still doubt the Chiefs winning this game. Yeah, I mean... I just and, I, and I'm curious to you guys. Do you guys? What is the last time you guys have seen someone? And I think Justin Reed did it a little bit. I don't wouldn't say to this extent. When do you ever see a guy pregame talk down about the team? 
win and be able to talk trash after. If, I, if there's any examples, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, Jaden, just uh, go into a different sport and exposing my own team. I don't know if you remember back in 20, I think it was 2016 when the Warriors blew that 3-1 lead. Clay Thompson said after they went up 3-1, they said, I think LeBron got his feelings hurt. LeBron laughed it off, and the rest is history. So yeah. if you're going to talk trash, you better be ready to back it up. Yeah, and, and, and that being said, you know, I, I love this quote by Mitch Holtis, the uh, the play-by-play announcer for the Kansas City Chiefs. He said, you can hate the Chiefs, you can disrespect the Chiefs, but you're going to have to deal with the Chiefs. But it's also vice versa with Tyree Kill. So I wanted to get a little bit into the matchups. Is Zach, you're you're Steve Spagnuolo for this week. You know, you get to play a, a little game where you get to transfer into Steve Spagnuolo's body. What are you going to try to do? We talked a little bit about it uh, early in the week when we recapped the Broncos game and previewing a little bit of the Dolphins game, trying to slow down Tyree Kill. Who is your guy? You go up to him during the practice and say, hey, he's your guy. You're going to have to just do what you can versus a guy like Tyree Kill. He's going to get some, but we're going to need you to win at times. Who's that guy you're calling upon? It, it's Sneed. It, it is 100% Sneed. Sneed is battle-tested. I, he doesn't always uh... – you know, lock down the opposing uh, number one receiver, but he is the one that has the most experience. He nearly every game he's going against their number one and he plays physical. He doesn't let you get easy yards. And I mean, we saw it last week. He kind of got toasted by Sutton, but he, he puts up a fight. He plays physically and that's really all you can ask. And the the, McDuffie's more of a slot guy. And so we wouldn't really ask that of him unless Tyreek's in the slot. And then the other guys are just too inexperienced uh, with Watson and Williams. So it's going to be Sneed. Um, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of help, but it's it's neat. Yeah, Zach. Yeah, you, uh, I agree. I, no, no, you're good, Grizzy. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, Zach, just to piggyback on what you're saying, I was thinking personally McDuffie. I know McDuffie, he's got that dog in him. He's been playing like a top 10 corner. But like I told Jaden before the podcast started, I said these Chiefs corners are going to have to – they're going to get their cardio worth. They're going to they're gonna have to run. They're going to make sure to keep up with Tyreek Hill. If he gets past you, he's – you know, he's got the speed to hit the end zone. So as long as he just – if the Chiefs corners just don't get burned, I think they'll do they'll do all right. And I feel like you yeah. have to you have to bring some. And Spags always does. Um, Tua's thing is he's a timing guy. If he has time, yeah. he's going to – he gets it out quick, very quick, like quicker than almost every quarterback. But yeah. if, if you can get in his face early – I think our defense is good for this because we lead the league in batted balls – uh, I think this year and yeah, then I'm George for sure Collins. last year. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that goes under the radar, they they said it his rookie year last year, but he's a national water polo goalie. Like that's unfair. Yeah. So Watching him, up. that's just unfair. If a ball goes past him, he he's been doing this his whole life. It's easier than him for anyone cool. than uh, anyone else. And we just we gotta get pressure. Jones has to step up because the last couple of weeks Jones has yep. underperformed heavily. Uh, I always keep up with like PFF grades. And last week was yeah. one of the was one of the few times I've ever seen Jones in the bottom tier of uh, Chiefs defenders. He had like a sixty two grade or something like that, or even lower. And so we need quick pressure because you can get all these coverage. I mean, we're not going to get coverage sacks first of all because this the team is basically uncoverable. But if you don't get to to a quick, he's going to get the ball out and they're going to run. So just pressure. We need pressure. Yeah, I think one yeah, of the best things you guys could do is uh you like like Jaden was kind of saying Tyreek, you know, he's kind of like a funny guy. He's like to mess around a lot. If you if you get him mad, maybe like rough him up a little bit, you know, maybe line up, you know, get him yeah, get him off his game. Get if you get Tyreek off his game, I'm telling you, he'll he'll lose. He'll start getting mad. He will start getting mad and then, you know, they have to turn to Waddle. You know, Waddle's with th- a year 3 player, but Waddle is no He's no Tyree kill. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And that's what I was going to kind of ask you before we get on the, the just the chief side of the ball is, are you guys just a little bit concerned is that we're, we're kind of doing too much of we're doing it. I don't know. Cause we've talked about it is we're all going the 2000 yard man, Tyree kill Jalen Waddle's going over there and just going, it's me over here. Are you, or are you thinking, you know, whoever we put over there, if it's McDuffie on that side, or if it's Sneeze fights, Versus, or if it's Williams, are you thinking they'll be able to handle him? No, Tyree Kill is truly the guy where we just got to watch out for everyone else's second priority. 
I think that's got to be it. I mean, Waddle Waddle's still a great receiver, but Tyreek Hill is game breaking. I feel like every time right. I check the score in the Dolphins game, it's like the ESPN updates. It's like Tyreek Hill's sixty four yard touch. It's just insane. He's on pace for nearly like twenty two hundred yards and eighteen touchdowns. It's it's got to be him because that's their offense last year was a lot more balanced between Tyreek and Waddle than it is this year. This year right. it is he- heavily Tyreek. And one thing we can't get caught up with because of it's so beautiful, honestly, how they play because of their speed at receiver. Everyone's worried about getting deep and then their zone run game gets in and they have the fastest running backs in the league and our DBs aren't even watching. And it's just it's honestly beautiful. So uh, I don't want I, I'm not going to get into like if the Chiefs were to not win the Super Bowl, but the Dolphins, what McDaniel has made is honestly a beautiful offense. And I love watching it. Just kudos to them. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. And that's why people don't realize they got Terry Kill, they got Waddle, they got all these weapons, but they're the number one rushing attack in the league. They have the best run game in the league. Why? Because everyone's worried about them way downfield. And all of a sudden, they're like, okay, we're just going to run the ball for, for 10 yards up the gut right here. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, it, again, the Chiefs have a lot to, lot to handle. Um, but with that being said, so are the Dolphins. The Dolphins defense, yeah, they got some playmakers, but. The Dolphins, again, they have not been a, just a consistently dominant team. They are prone to give up some points with what the Eagles did, and the Eagles weren't even on their best game. They turned the ball several times versus the Dolphins. But you have a team where, again, the Chiefs can find ways to put up points against. And I know, Grizzly, you wanted to talk about a little bit of a, uh, a what the Dolphins like to run um, and, and what the Chiefs like to do versus uh, some of the defenses the Dolphins like to run. Yeah, I just got to say, um, Travis Kelsey, I think he's going to be a big, big, big player in this game. I don't know if the uh, Javon Holland or whoever the Dolphins are going to have guard him is going to you right. know, be able to shut down Travis Kelsey. And like Jaden, you were saying before, the Chief, this is definitely a big week for the Chiefs wide receivers. They need to get it done. I think Rasheed Rice has a big yeah. game. But, you know, you go back and look at the Chargers game. Um, you run man coverage – against Travis Kelsey, you know, you can stop him a little bit, but if the Miami, if they run that zone coverage, Kelsey's going to be eaten all game. Kelsey eats versus that zone coverage. Yeah, and I, I know you brought it up earlier, is uh, Mahomes' is numbers with Kelsey in that first half of that Chargers game um, versus zone. And what did the, the Chargers mm-hmm. have to do? They were like, okay, Mahomes about to have 600 yards if we don't um, – switch over to this man-to-man and try to, try to get a guy like Derwin James on. Why do you think it's uh, so effective why Mahomes and Kelsey uh, are so – just they're so on key in a type of zone like this? And we also seen – apparently MVS and, and, and these other guys are actually receivers and they actually know how to catch the ball versus zone. Zach, I'll flip it to you. Why, why is it that the Chiefs are able to play so much better offensive side of the ball on a zone? It's our personnel with Rice and Kelsey. They are able to find the zone, unlike like, especially Rice as a rookie, and then Travis Kelsey obviously right. is all time at that. But it's less actual man coverage. It's more what they do to Kelsey and man. They don't just play Kelsey man to man and play a cover one or a cover two. Yeah, they they bracket Kelsey, and mm-hmm. our guys cannot beat one on one man coverage. Like that's the yeah. one. I of course I was kind of indifferent to trading for a wide receiver just because I'm always looking long term as long as we have Mahomes, but our guys don't know how to get open. And if you look at the separation grades for basically all of our receivers, Watson is in the upper like uh, third. Everyone else, even Rice, who has been stellar, he's been stellar against zone. All the other guys against man coverage are in like the bottom uh, fourth of the league, especially Sky Moore. His yak. And his getting open is both like bottom 10 among starting receivers. And so I really was weary once the Chargers uh, pulled that out in the second half because that's the blueprint. And the Chargers are not a man-to-man team. They're not even built to be doing right. that. There's other there's other teams that do man-to-man more like the Broncos do with their lockdown corner. Yeah. And so I it really depends on who we're playing against. But I'm kind of afraid that. Uh, the Chargers revealed something to the rest of the league that we can't do anything about. Yeah, uh, and that's really what worries me going into the Dolphins game is you got to hope that just, 
either Rice or MVS or Kadarius, is they're able to just keep getting open and man coverage. Bro, they're sitting there saying, guys, we got to switch to the zone. But how you beat a man-to-man coverage sometimes is you run the ball. So I think I think Andy Reid has got to say, okay, these guys are not getting separation, like you just mentioned. The guy who Chiefs fans apparently like to crap on the most, Justin Watson, he's the only guy getting open downfield. He's our, he's our Tyree kill now. So that's what's kind of concerning is we just have guys who are not getting open um, – Man to man, and last year we saw Mahomes. He loved to get the ball. He was like two of this year. Boom, rhythm, boom, on time, boom, boom, boom. He kind of turned into an Alex Smith with a ninety-yard cannon arm. So he was a guy that was just getting the ball quick, getting the goal, getting the ball to the possession receivers like Juju. I just don't know if we have that right now. But that again, when you have possession receivers like that, they have to be able to work versus man to man. Right now, no one's able to work versus man to man. So hopefully, yeah, the, the Miami Dolphins do come out in zone. We're able to do that. That's why I do want to see a heavy dosage of um, Pacheco. But the, the Chiefs receivers are going to have to learn how to beat man-to-man. And that brings us perfectly into our one of our last segments is uh, the X-Factors. If you guys give me two X-Factors from – or excuse me, just two X-Factors, one on each side of the ball for each team. Uh, we'll start with you, Grizzy. Grizzy, who do you think – uh, is just going to be an X factor uh, for the. We'll, we'll flip flop. Uh, we'll give you your, your Dolphins defensive pick. They'll flip over to uh, Zach for his Dolphins defensive pick. Who is their X factor on defense for this game versus the Kansas City Chiefs? Grizzy? I think it's a sleeper pick, but uh, I've been watching a lot of Christian Wilkins. He's been getting a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. He's turning into a great edge rusher. I think he could be a sleeper X factor into this game. Yeah, I, I, I like Christian Wood. That's a great pick. Most people want to say, you know, Howard or Ramsey or, you know, you may have Waddle or you have Mostart. But, I mean, Christian, he I, I think he's up there, you know, in the inside of the, the defense with uh, Chris Jones. He reminds me of a young Chris Jones. He really does. Um, so, I, I like that pick. That's a good pick uh, on the, the, the uh, Dolphins defensive side of the ball. Uh, Zach, who are you looking at um, – on the Dolphins, even so, like said, that guy is going to be their X factor if they want to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, I'm looking at the guy who's going to be guarding Kelsey the most. And as far as I know, it should be Javon Holland, the safety. Right. And ultimately, when you're going against the Chiefs offense, Kelsey is the win condition for the most part, again, at least against good teams. Uh, we can afford to yeah. beat bad teams without Kelsey getting too involved, like early in the season. Right. I guess the Jags aren't bad, but... Uh, but against good teams, Kelsey needs to get involved because the other guys just can't produce at a high enough level for us to win games. So Javon Holland, if he can do a decent job guarding Kelsey, it's going to make it hard because then when Kelsey's not getting open, Mahomes starts to overthink and panic and throw lob passes deep, you know, so I'd say it's Javon Holland. Yeah, I I 100% agree. It sucks that Mahomes has to try and all of a sudden when Kelsey's not getting open, that Superman cape comes out and feels like he has to make more plays than he does. So, yeah, I think whoever they put on Kelsey, this is a big deal. If it's like, Kelsey, if you want to have a big game, this is a big game to have. You, you know, maybe we need to fly in Taylor Swift again. I don't know. There's something. Maybe he needs to wear the, 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 the lucky jeans or the lucky hat or whatever it is because uh, when, when we know when Travis Kelsey gets going, it, it helps other receivers just get open in general. Because that's when, yeah, they do want to send two. It, it does try to, you know, kind of free up the middle of the field for, I guess, just Rice because no one else wants to get open. Um, Grizzly, who is your Chiefs defensive X factor of this game? Who are you looking at and you say, you know what, this guy's got to be the X factor? Man, I think it's pretty simple. And I'm taking whoever's guarding Tyreek Hill. And I think that's going to be Legereus Sneed. I'm taking Legereus Sneed, you know. A little uh, little injury maybe in the practice. I heard he's having a little knee injury or a little knee problems, but I think he'll be ready to go Sunday, Sunday morning. But I, I think if Legereus Sneed can shut down Tyreek Hill, I think that's your X factor on the Chiefs defense. I know, you know, Teron Armstead might not – I don't know if he's playing or not. I know he's another one on that injury list for uh, Thursday's right. practice, but – you know, expect Chris Jones, obviously. I mean, you know, I'm hoping he has a good game for you guys. But I think that X Factor has got to be Legereus Sneed shutting down Tyreek Hill. Yeah, great pick. 
Uh, we know that uh, Zach mentioned earlier, like he's going to be the guy. And I think they will put, I think they'll, they're not going to just put one guy in Terry. I think, you know, that's tough. That's a lot. Like you said, that's a lot of cardio. That's a lot of cardio for one guy. Um, I think they'll primarily put uh, Sneed on Terry. Cause we got to remember, and, and, and Zach, I think can attest to this. We don't see Sneed get burnt. We see Sneed get lost. He'll get lost that time versus bigger receivers. For some reason, we play the Chargers. They have all those bigger receivers. We have, we're accepted to get Moss, but how often do you see the Chiefs receivers or excuse me, DBs just get burnt? There, a lot of these guys are quick DBs. McDuffie's a smaller guy. A lot of these guys are quicker. So I like to sneed a uh, pick on the defensive side of the ball. Now I move over to the offensive side of the ball. Zach, who's that guy other than Tyree Kill? Because we know Tyree Kill is an X Factor. Who's that guy outside Tyree Kill? You go, this guy is going to be a huge X Factor on offense. Tua, that's that's cheating. That's the quarterback. I'll go with someone else. Uh, I'll go with Raheem Mostert, who has been right. underperforming uh, the last couple games, I believe, but obviously is having a stellar season. But the Chiefs' yeah. uh, weakness on defense currently is their run defense, and yeah. with that, with Nick Bolton out being replaced by Tranquil, uh, it's looking like a glaring weakness, especially against this run attack with Mostert. And I don't. I, it's not necessarily just Mostert because they interchange a lot. Jeff Wilson gets carries. Ahmed gets carries. And so it's really like a running back by committee. But whoever is running the ball needs to make the most of it because the, that's the that's the Chiefs' weakness. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. It's run, running the ball. We saw the Broncos the week before. Yeah, they didn't run it officially, 3.5, 3.8 yards per carry. But they still had 100 yards. So had over 100 yards rushing. We all know about the Chiefs' defensive line. It, but right behind the Eagles, maybe even this year, it's Chiefs, Eagles, Browns. They are a last year they had 55 sacks. They're even better this year. Charles Menny would have three sacks on the season, uh, a, a, a batted pass or an, an interception that uh, Nick Bolton or was a Willie Gay picked up. So you have all these defensive linemen on the Chiefs that are able to get off the quarterback. We have George Kalafis who already has more sacks or a same amount of sacks this season than they did all of last season, six and a half. So I think I'm not worried about them getting to Tua. Um, they just have the those linebackers and the guys in the middle field have to be able to react quickly because he knows you're going to have Chris Jones breathing down his throat, Amena Hugh, Carl Loftus. You're going to have all these guys, uh, uh, Mike Dana. Mike Dana has played absolutely phenomenal. You know, all these guys breathing down his throat, but they got to be able to stop the run game. And the run game has not been uh, where they should be right now. Um, I think it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the pack of the NFL, 18, 17, 16, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think Moser is going to be a huge X factor. Uh, Grizzy, other than maybe a guy like Kelsey, who are you – and I know you said Rice, maybe you have another name. Who are you like – if the Chiefs can find a way to get this guy the ball, he can be a huge X factor for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jaden, I, I think it's – I think it's Isaiah Pacheco, to be honest. I think if Pacheco has a big game, you know right. – you can open up that run, that run game, not have to have Mahomes throw against Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, Javon Holland. You know, if, if we can get this right, if they guys, if you guys can get that run game going, I think that could do wonders for your team. You know, you got a player like Isaiah Pacheco taken in the seventh round, but he's a stud, man. I tell you, he's a, he's a top 15 running back. And if they get him going, just, it'll be a good game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we've seen when when you give a guy like Isaiah Pacheco carries, I'm not saying he needs 30 or 20 carries. Get him in the, at least the teens or 12, you know, carries. I mean, last game he had eight carries for 40 yards. They just were not able to just run the ball. Go run the ball. Try to run the ball. So, yeah, I would like to see Isaiah Pacheco get going. Because remember, if you could limit how many times Tyree Kill – has the, the 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 wheels is a two little feet on the field, then again you're going up against high power. So I think if they can manage the clock and really just play slow ball and just uh, let that clock run, um, I think that'll be gigantic. I think that'll be huge for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, as we get our last key or I see our last X factor, Zach, who on the O for the Kansas City Chiefs? Do you got? Being that X factor, I was gonna say Pacheco. I planned out a whole dialogue, but yeah, I mean, I'm, hey, hey, okay. The thing is, it's not just about usage of Pacheco; it's also about him performing. 
because right. there's been countless times this year where there's been a hole and he hasn't hit the hole or he tries to go too far outside and get around the edge when it's not there and he ends up just getting no yards. And so I want right. to see him. It pro- it might not happen this week. It will be a thing where he'll have to progress uh, in his ball carrying ability, but he has the tools with the power, the strength, the speed. If he develops that vision and that knowledge of when should I cut and where should I cut to, he really can be elite because he's already evolved as a pass catcher. He's having more of a role in the pass in the pass catching this season than right. he did last year. I think he already has way more catches this year than he did all of last year. And so if he can take that next step with his vision and decisiveness, because I see him a lot of times, I I, I have PTSD from Le'Veon Bell just standing behind his O-line for a cool like two seconds after getting, and then a hole would just magically open up. He would just sprint through it. I see Pacheco doing that a lot, but he's not, yeah. he's not hitting the hole fast enough or he's hitting the wrong hole. So if he can develop his game, which I'm again, I'm saying it won't probably happen this week, but if he can perform this week, then uh, this defense can definitely, can definitely get got. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's why you said it because there is times where he does kind of have the Le'Veon Bell ability to sit there behind these these that 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 front you know three uh, Creed Smith and Tooney and then there's times where again he thinks he's Jamal Charles and he's like well I'll go to the outside and it's like no no bud you, let's let's not do that because you're gonna stomp your feet as hard as you can like you're that one kid at the sleepover who's not allowed up soda um, so yeah I agree with you I think he's better just kind of just you know up the gut he's he just just riding that center and that guard. Um, and then when he gets in the open field, he's gone. Like, he's gone. His, you know, his breakaway speed and, and his burst, just like Rice, is, is is great. And he's such a hard guy to bring down because he just goes through people. But, yeah, I think his decision-making needs to get a little better. And that just comes with playing more. He's still – like, he's young running back. I think he's only still only 23. So, like, he's young. Um, you know, I, I don't think he was a four-year guy in college, but – you know, he, he's a young back. I, I like Pacheco. I think, and I think he is a, a huge X factor. So I don't mind you, two, both of you guys, um, picking r- the running backs because the Chiefs, when they can set up play action, but that also comes with guys getting open downfield. But if they can set up play action by running the ball, you keep two off the field. You keep Terry Kill off the field. I love all of that. Run, run, run the ball. Um, hopefully, they can run it up. That's what I want to get in our very last segment. Give me – just kind of hype the Chiefs fans up. And if you do have the, them winning the game, give me your just your your little minute soundbite of why the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win the game and what's going to be the score. Uh, we'll go with the, the WWE man, the man who knows all about promos. Nick, give me your best – just your, your, your best why the Kansas City Chiefs are going to beat. If they, if you do have them winning, and I know you said earlier you do, so yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you do. Why the Chiefs are going to beat them? The, the 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 top offense, Miami Dolphins. Give me your best speech to Chiefs fans right now. Well, Jaden, come Tuesday, Chiefs are going to win this game. And uh, speaking of wrestling, let me talk to you. Chiefs are going to win this game, man. I gotta say. Chris Jones is going to have a great game. You know, like I said, Teron Armstead, Robert Hunt, both, you know, having a little bit of a uh, little beaten up a little bit, probably will play. But like I said, I think it's all going to come down to if Sneed can, can really like throw Tyreek out of his game. And, you know, you're going to, you gotta, you gotta swallow the pill that Tyreek's going to have a hundred yards. You got to swallow that pill. Mo- right. Most likely he's going to, he's going to have a hundred yards this game, but I'm, you know, the numbers don't lie. I'm not sold on Tua yet. I he can't beat the teams over 500, and that's why that's a big reason why I think the Chiefs get it done. I think the Chiefs are going to feed on that. I think the Chiefs are going to feed on what Tyreek Hill has been saying all week. I think this is going to make Mahomes snap into a whole nother person. Like if you thought Mahomes was good, when he's Mahomes gets mad, you know that's a whole nother guy. You know, just going based off. Let's just go based off the X factors. You know, Pacheco. I think he has a I think he has a good game at least, you know. You know, I think I think he gets into the end zone once, maybe at least, you know, like I said, dude, he needs he needs at least 12 carries a game, if not 15. And I'd like to see him have at least 70 yards to 100 yards and obviously, you know, 
hopefully for a big game from Kelsey too. Yeah, I, I, I like all that. You're giving the Chiefs fans a little riled up for this game in Germany. We're going overseas. Um, we're going to treat this game like it's World War II again. So we're, we're going back over to Germany. We're, we're, we're going for a win. Give me your uh, <laughs> give me your, 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 your prediction, your bet. I, I know you're, you're with uh, the new TPT uh, show, Best Bets. So what do you have this scoring be? Give me your final game prediction for uh, this game in Germany. I still think it's going to be a close game. I'm thinking maybe uh, 30, maybe like a 35, 31 game. I know, like I said, it, the Chiefs don't got to win by 20 to prove they're the better team. The Chiefs just got to win this game. Right. You better so smash 35, the over. 31. I hope you hit the over on a bet if you're predicting 35, 31. You got the over? Yes. To my to my good friend Zach here, who I just met, the Chiefs are currently favored by one point five points going into this game, and I think that's uh, you know a little little uh, slip in here to the you know best bets. Uh, you guys should take that. I think you guys should take that bet. All right, I, I, I like it. Just throwing it over to Zach. Zach, speak to the kingdom real quick. Chiefs kingdom. Who do we got? We got the greatest quarterback of all time, Patrick Mahomes, okay. on the squad. Throwing to the yes, greatest sir. tight end. To ever. No, no, Travis Kelsey's not the greatest tight end. He's the greatest football player I've ever watched with my eyes. When he catches that ball and okay. he does that little half spin and he's never okay. once got tackled on it, yeah, he's going to do that to the Dolphins and all their players on that trash defense. And, that and defense you know, is garbage. Sorry, what? No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, you good, you good. You good? I was gonna say, as as the Chiefs fans, it's it's place where we run it, place really haunted. By number fifty eight, it's DT baby. Yes, sir. Yeah, that boy, that boy got the, the legend. That boy got the the great, going. and we want it, like baby. It. <laughs> yes, sir. Let him know. Hey, I'm gonna continue still, real quick. Still a Viking, so. Yeah, but yeah, you gotta respect fifty eight. <laughs> and guess what we got. We got Donovan Smith protecting our number one guy. Stop playing. Okay. Those are my three guys. Travis Kelsey, Donovan Smith, and Patrick Mahomes. Donovan Smith, Grace LT of okay. all time. What, 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 what? We got a little scoring prediction. What's your scoring prediction? I think I said last show, what did I say? 27-24. Uh, That's lame. That's lame. I'm going. I'm. I, do we hold the Dolphins to 8-17? 3017 Kansas City. 3017. What is it? 3017. We got a top five defense. 3017. Okay, we got Zach's pick. We're gonna we're gonna bring in our man Dustin Klug real quick. Dustin, if you can hear us, uh, we'll have our guys bring him in real quick. Dustin, we want to get your game pick real quick. Uh Dustin, what do you have this? We know you're gonna be joining uh Nicholas New on best bets. So uh Dustin. What do you got for this game? The Kansas City Chiefs, we have Zach 31 17. I'll give my pick at the end. Zach 31 17. Love it. 30. We got 30. a Grizzly 35 31. 30. Uh, so yeah, Dustin, Zach, said, Zach said 30, 30, 30 17. Let's not get 30, greedy. 17. Right. 30, 30, 17. 30, 17. Uh, Dustin, what do you got for this Chiefs game? I think I stated in a earlier episode that I, I think I went. 31-28. I think it'll be a high, higher scoring game. I think it'll be a close game. I have the Chiefs winning 31-28. 31-28. Uh, we know that you're going to be joining uh, you're going to join my man uh, Grizzy here for best bets. We know you're excited about that. Make sure you guys lock it in and make sure you guys stay to the end of every week on Fridays to check out best bets. They're going to be telling you guys what to bet, where to bet, um, and make sure you guys, of course, uh, I think Dustin has a promo for uh, underdogs. Is, is that is that true, Dustin? Uh, make sure you go to uh, underdogs. Yep, go to underdog fantasy. Sign up if you're a first time user. Sign up using that code uh, that Vikings fan. Uh, you'll match up match your first deposit up to five hundred dollars. So who who wouldn't like that? Go do it. Yeah, uh, love it. 
Uh, make sure you guys go check all of that out. And make sure, of course, you guys go check out Grizzy on TikTok. Make sure you guys go check out Dustin as well. Uh, we will see you guys next week on the TPT podcast to go over this Dolphins game. Uh, we will see you guys later. However you say uh, goodbye in Germany. Um, gotcha. I think it's I do. I do. I do. Something like that. Any last words, guys? Auf Wiedersehen. I see, I see, I see, whatever it is. I, I'm not German. <laughs> All right. Dude, like I said, guys, just make sure when you guys check out at Jaden Sturz, you use code Grizzy for uh, 96% off. Uh, that is not a real code. Do not do that. Um, 96 but, is crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't do that, guys. That is not a real code. Um, but, uh, Zach, any last words you got to say to the Chiefs Kingdom before we get out of here? Hey, y'all are about to be pleasantly surprised in Munich or wherever they're playing in Germany. Watch out. Frankfurt. 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 Frankfurt, Germany. All right, guys, that'll do it uh, for the TBT podcast. We will see you guys next time on the TBT podcast.